Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. And I welcome everyone in the world online um, to the East Lemon celebration of Pentecost. This morning we will be having a special celebration. We will be inviting the Holy Spirit to join us over and over and over. And I invite you to open your hearts. Feel the presence of the Holy Spirit on this wonderful Pentecost day. Please stand for the call to worship. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. This great and wide sea in which are innumerable teeming things, living things both small and great. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. When the rush spirit flow, we are here with one accord. When rush spirit flow, we are here with one accord. Wind rush, spirit flow, we are here with one accord. We are here and we wait with expectation. Spirit flow. Let us sing love, divine, all loves, excelling. Perfectly 
Let us pray. Holy One, for all of the ways you speak to us, in rushing wind, in dancing flames, in words we understand, and in all that is beyond language, we give thanks. Give us courage to speak your love everywhere we go, to everyone we meet. Amen. Let us now confess our sins before God and one another. Come, Holy Spirit, into my soul. Enlighten my mind that I may know the sins I ought to confess, and grant me the grace to confess them fully, humbly, and with a contrite heart. Help me to firmly resolve not to commit them again. Hear these words from God, spoken by the prophet Ezekiel. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will be my people, and I will be your God. Amen. Let us affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together. Come, Come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created and renewed. O God, instruct our hearts by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant us in the same Spirit to be truly wise. Our first lesson is from the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound 
like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoking mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. These are the words of Luke in the Acts of the Apostles. Our song of praise is Psalm 104, 24 through 34, number 826 in your hymnal. So we'll begin with verse 24 on 827 <coughs> and continue through 34. Please stand. <laughs> Are your works in wisdom you have made them all the earth is full of your creatures yonder is the sea great and wide creeping things innumerable are there living things both small and great there go the ships and leviathan whom you form to play in it these all look to you to give them their food in due season when you give to them they gather it when you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. 
and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have need. May my meditation be pleasing to the Lord in whom I rejoice. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, who rules all creation. Our Gospel lesson this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 26 and 27. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Today is not an ordinary Sunday. It is a very, very special day in the year of the of the church in the liturgical year. It is Pentecost, and we wear red, because on Pentecost, we thank God for the Holy Spirit, that God has sent the Holy Spirit down onto the earth, into us, into our lives, to shape and form history, the path of humanity and move us toward the kingdom of God, which is here and not yet. Have you ever planned something, something big, that took a lot of planning, like a big graduation party, it's that time of year, or a wedding, or an anniversary party, something really big, and there were setbacks along the way, things didn't quite go right, and you were having trouble holding on to hope. But, but you persevered, and then when the day approached and you knew that things were going to fall into place, you were so excited that you were just bursting with joy. It was almost like you were drunk. That is Pentecost. That is Pentecost. The disciples were so filled up with the Holy Spirit that it was just bursting out of them. And they spoke in other languages. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never experienced drinking too much and then suddenly being able to speak Greek <laughs> or French. I mean, I do speak a little French, but if I have a drink, it doesn't improve. <laughs> So that line about them being drunk is kind of funny. <laughs> People just didn't know what was going on. What could this be? Why, why could each person from a different country understand what they were saying? Because that is God. That is God's work in us. God gives us the ability to understand if we let God and the Holy Spirit into our lives. The name of this special Sunday, Pentecost, comes from a zigzaggy connection with an Old Testament festival. So I'm going to give you a tiny little history lesson. You might remember that the New Testament was originally written in Greek, the Old Testament in Hebrew. So the word Pentecost is a Greek word because it's in the New Testament, and it means 50th. Penta is five, right? Like the Pentagon is a five-sided shape. P 
Penta is 5. Pentecost is 50th. And 50th comes from the Old Testament Hebrew festival of Shavuot, which falls on the 50th day after the Passover. And you may remember that the Passover was the meal Jesus was celebrating with his disciples on Holy Thursday, the Last Supper. That was Passover. The people of ancient Israel were part of an agricultural society. They were farmers. Does anybody here know a farmer? Does anybody garden? They worked the land. Their lives revolved around planting and harvesting. And if any of you are farmers or gardeners, you might be familiar with the USDA hardiness zones. The USDA plant hardiness zone map, according to their website, is the standard by which gardeners and growers can determine which plants are most likely to thrive at a location. The map is based on the average annual minimum winter temperature divided into 10 degree Fahrenheit zones. Susquehanna County, where my husband and I live, is zone 5B. East Lemon, I think, is zone 6A. Does anybody? Yeah, 6A. So you're, you know, you're a little bit south of us, and you're just over the border. In Israel, the frost-free growing season, frost-free season, starts on February 1st. Has anybody ever planted tomatoes on February 1st? <laughs> we just put ours in. Well, Brian just put ours in this week. He's hopeful. In Israel, the season goes from February 1st to December 1st, months longer than our growing season. And the harvesting of grain begins with the barley harvest at Passover, around Easter, late March, early April, depending on the phases of the moon. They use a lunar calendar. And other grains are then harvested after barley, ending after seven weeks with the harvest of wheat. Wheat is harvested at Shavuot. Wheat is the last grain harvest. And if you're more interested in gardening practices in ancient Israel, you can find them in Exodus 34. So on the day of Shavuot, the final grain harvest happens, and the Israelites would give a grain offering to God, sometimes roasted grain or bread, which is made from wheat. That's also the day that the receiving of the Torah, the book of the law, is celebrated. Moses received the law from God on Mount Sinai. The Torah is the first five books of the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers. The Torah, the law, brought the Hebrew people together under God as a nation. They were gathered up like a harvest of people. On the first Shavuot, or Pentecost, after the resurrection of Jesus, the disciples were gathered together in a room, and God gave the Holy Spirit to the followers of Christ. Christians gathered together in Jerusalem, and since then, through baptism by water and fire, we and the world have received the Holy Spirit. God is making the final harvest of all the people, everywhere. We remember and celebrate this as the formation of the church, God's church, 
Christ's body in the world. We remember and experience these, this every time the Holy Spirit touches our lives. The Hebrew people received the law from God through Moses. The law was given as a gift, a way to help people live their lives the right way, a life full of joy and righteousness, a godly life. So why, you might ask, why wasn't that enough? Why did God then send the Holy Spirit? Well, the trouble is that we humans saw the law as rules, restrictions. And when we know there's a rule, we often look for loopholes. So there was a tendency to treat the law as a restriction rather than a gift. That wasn't God's intent. God's intent was that we follow the heart of the law, that we love God and love our neighbors. But somehow that is often lost. So first, God came down to earth as flesh and lived among us. Jesus, the Christ, showed us how to live, how to interpret the law through love. And when Christ ascended into heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit, which he called the Advocate, our Advocate, our Guide, to help us. We received the Holy Spirit from God through Christ. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand the law on a spiritual level, not a legalistic level, not looking for loopholes, looking for love. The spirit or heart of the law can be found through the Holy Spirit right living through connection to the Holy Spirit. Have you experienced the presence of the Advocate, the Holy Spirit in your life? Has there ever been a time when a scripture was read and it went right through you and your heart was strangely warmed or you felt this tingling like God was talking to you you were pierced to your soul. For the next several weeks, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit in people's lives. I invite you to think about this. And if you want, if the Holy Spirit moves you to share a testimony, to come up front and talk about, or from your seat, Talk about what God has done in your life, how the Holy Spirit has been present for you. If anyone feels moved to testify right now, I invite you to do that. I'm Angie. Hi, Angie. Um, I was in addiction for a long time. And um, God has uh, come into my life, and He was with me the whole time I was in my addiction, and you know I prayed the whole time, but um, He watched over me and He saved me from many things. You know I was in several car accidents; I could have been killed from the accidents that I actually should have been killed, and I was. You know um, I should have been dead several times. The things that I did in my life. Um, Pulled me out of that and gave me a second chance at life. Um, you know, I'm so grateful. I went through many terrible things in my life, and he's, I, I mean, I struggled through things, but he's always been there and saving from myself, you know. Um, and like, I have a spirituality now. I always believed in Jesus and I always prayed, but like, I have a level of spirituality now. I don't know if you know what I mean. I do. But, um, like, 
I know that he has me now. And I trust that no matter what happens, I'm going to be okay. And believe me, I go through some things in my life. Um, things aren't great all the time. But <laughs> <laughs> they never are great all the time, are they? But that's how I realized that I was running away from life my whole life, you know. And um, I, I can deal with things, you know, now. And um, I, I pray every day. And there's certain, I'm in a program. And it, the 12 steps is easy, right to God. It's all yep. about that, you know. And um, I'm just grateful. No matter what happens, I know that God has me. Even sometimes I try to do things on my own still. And those are the days when things get messed up, you know. <laughs> but um, I just know that God has me today. And uh, I'm so grateful that I allowed him to do that. Praise God. And Angie, thank you so much for sharing that. You are filled with the Spirit. Thank God for this presence of God and the Holy Spirit in your life. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I wasn't sure if anybody would feel moved to share, so I have a story to share with you, and I hope you don't mind. Um, it takes a moment to share it. Uh, thank you, Angie. So I want to share with you uh, the story of how I ended up going to seminary. I'd always been active in my church, but I'd been feeling that God wanted me to do more, and I, I just couldn't believe, like, more. I, was, I felt like I was doing so much in South Gibson, in the church. And then during Lent, in 2017, Margie McCarty was our pastor. Many of you know her. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was terrific. And at the beginning of Lent, I had this amazing dream, which I'll tell you about another time. That was Ash Wednesday night. And then on Holy Thursday, she was preaching in Gibson. And I was sitting in the back with my husband, and she read the scripture, and right before she started to preach, a vision popped into my head, this picture popped into my head of our children's table, this table. And I was sitting at it on a street corner, and I was serving it looked like bread and juice on a street corner. I knew I was on a street corner because I could see uh, an overpass behind me. And then Pastor Margie said, have you ever been at a family gathering where there's a lot of people and you have a little children's table? And I thought, oh, Shoot. <laughs> what the heck? This, what is going on? This must mean something. The thing popped into my head before she said the words. Okay, okay, I better pay attention. Is this, this God? Am I going crazy? And then she preached on Luke, the story of the great banquet, where a man plans a big party and invites a bunch of people, and when the day comes, they don't show up. So he tells his servants to go out in the streets and invite everybody. The poor, the lame, the undesirables, the people that nobody ever invites to a party. And they came because the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And I sat there and for weeks I thought, what? What does this mean? Does God really want me to take this little blue table and sit on a street corner? Really? Like, why? What is the point of that? And I prayed about it and agonized over it, and I finally decided, okay, fine. If that's what God wants me to do, I guess, I mean, it's not going to kill me. I'm going to do it. So the scene in my vision looked like Greenridge Street in Scranton. So I went with my little blue table on a Friday morning, and I sat on the sidewalk on Greenridge Street, and I put up my table, and I sat there thinking, I'm, I'm supposed to be at work, and if somebody from work drives by, what am I going to say to them? I feel like an idiot. I, oh, Lord, is this really what you want me to do? What is the point of this? 
And about a half hour later, a man walked up to my table and he said, you're serving communion. And I said, well, I'm not serving communion because I'm not ordained, but I'm thinking about communion. You know about communion? And he said, oh yes, I used to go to church and take communion quite often. And I said, oh, you haven't been to church in a while? And he said, no, I'm homeless. I'm an alcoholic. I destroyed my family because of my alcoholism. I live down by the bridge, outside. I sleep outside. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry for your suffering. But you know, I would be happy to break bread with you. And I can read to you the passage in Mark that talks about the institution of communion. And so I did that. And we broke bread and we prayed together. And I said, you know, there's a church just a couple blocks away around the corner. And he said, oh, I can't go there. And I said, I would go with you. Oh, no, no, I can't go there. People in churches don't want someone like me walking in the door. They don't want me in there. And I thought, it's God's house. Everyone is welcome. But I, he's probably right. People would be nervous if he walked in. They don't know him, he's a stranger. This is terrible. Is this what you wanted to show me, God? Is this my call? And I looked up, he, he walked away, we said goodbye, and I looked up and on the cement of the underpass was spray painted. God is love. I have a picture of it. That was in May, and in August, I applied to seminary in, or in July, and I started seminary that August because I felt that God was telling me that we have got to open the doors of our churches. We have to get out there and make sure that Everybody knows that God loves them, and they are welcome in God's house. No matter how many mistakes they've made, no matter how bad they are, it doesn't matter. They are always loved by God. Amen, Angie? Amen. Amen. We are all sinners. We've all made mistakes, big and small. We all have regrets. And God always welcomes us back again and again and again and loves us. And we are all called to ministry. Each one of us has a job to do. They're not all the same job. I am called to outreach, to reach out to the lost, to the ones that think God has rejected them. He hasn't. As the Spirit is poured out into each one of us, we're all directed in the same direction to turn the world into the kingdom of God. Have you ever seen sparrows in flight, a flock, how they all fly up and then they fly together like the rushing of the wind, each one going, according to what God directs them to do. That is the work of the Holy Spirit in the world. When you feel like God is telling you, you should do this, that's because God has a plan. There's someone else who's being told to do something else. And if they do what God asks them to do, and you do what God asks, them, asks you to do, and the other person does what God asks them to do, it all works together. And none of us sees the big picture, only God. God has a plan. We just have to listen, pay attention. And even if we feel like idiots, just do it. If God says, take the little table and sit on the sidewalk, darn it, 
Get out there. Sit on the sidewalk. It's not going to kill you. And something amazing might happen. God might send someone into your life to show you a new direction. Are you ready to accept the invitation? Are you ready to listen to the Holy Spirit? Welcome the stranger. Welcome the ones that the world rejects and love them. Not because they deserve it. I don't deserve it. Because God gives it. God loves each one of us. Stay in formation like the sparrows. Swallows, sparrows, those birds that do that thing. <laughs> Stay connected to the Holy Spirit and fly with the wind and get ready for surprises. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is, I am the church, you are the church. Spirit. Michelle had a dream about Nancy. And then last week when I was preaching, I spontaneously started singing that song. It wasn't in my notes. 
It just felt like the right thing to do. And then Michelle told me afterwards, or no, Bob told me afterwards that that was Nancy's favorite song. One of the things that is so important in our lives is to be flexible because if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to kind of come in, if, we're, if we've got such a strict plan that we, the Holy Spirit can't get into our lives, those wonderful, amazing things don't happen. So we'll celebrate Nancy's life. What was Nancy's last name? Stonier? Stonier. Yeah, and the lives of other saints who've gone before you. And I want to celebrate Angie's presence with us. You certainly were a gift today. Thank you for being here. Do we have any concerns? Oh, Bob? I, I don't. I'm going to talk to Michelle this week, but just about her, her father and hopefully everything's gone well for her surgery. Yeah, I, I sent her an email and told her, you know, I... I I'm realizing how much the churches around here, the people are connected to each other. I guess many of you know Ellen Otten and Ellen and Stuart. Um, she is in a covenant discipleship group that I started at Mahupani. And she, when we met on Thursday, she asked that we pray for Dale. And I said, oh, Dale Shotwell. And she said, yes, he's having surgery. Did you know that? I said, yeah, his daughter, Michelle, goes to East Lemon. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we prayed for Dale. And Michelle said he's doing quite well. Yeah. Prayers for Ray, <clears throat> who had cancer surgery on Tuesday. Oh, yes, prayers for Ray, friend of ours. Yes. Anybody else? I'll also pray for our cooperative parish. Plans are sort of coming together. <laughs> Pastors are being appointed and things are getting organized, so we can pray for that. Anything else? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you never give up on us. You sent the law to guide us, but we insisted still on going our own way. So you sent Jesus Christ and the prophets to teach us, to help us understand why your way is the best way. And then you sent your Holy Spirit, Lord, not just to the Hebrew people, not just to the Christians, to all people, every person who has a sense that there is more to life, that is your presence. And slowly, you persevere and pull all people to you, ever so preciously. We give you thanks for the wonderful, wonderful people in our lives, the saints who have guided us, who have shown us a better way. We remember especially today Nancy Stonier, and we celebrate and give thanks for her life. And we give thanks for Angie that she found you, that she has let you come into her heart and her life. 
she will still face struggles. We all face struggles. We know that, Lord. You didn't promise an easy life, but you promised that no matter how hard our suffering, you would always be there to compassionately hold us in your arms and guide us to the light. We give you thanks, Lord, for Dale's successful surgery. We ask that you be with his care team, that he continue to get well. And we give you thanks for Ray and his surgery. We pray that you will be with him and that you will fill both of their hearts with the knowledge of your presence and your guidance in their lives. Lord, be with all of the churches of the United Methodist Church and all churches everywhere, all people everywhere. Guide us like birds flying on the wind. When we go in the wrong direction, Lord, steer us back, call us back. Send your wind through us, pierce our hearts. Let us pray now the prayer Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> And this is the time when we give back to God a portion of what he gave us.
As you go forth from this place, may the wind of the Spirit startle your senses and blow through your life. May the fire of the Spirit scorch your complacency and light your way. And may the blessing of the Holy One, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, rest with you now and forever. Amen.